to the, to the best of our knowledge up to the minute? Well, we can make it 27 right now because Mark Amaday, Republican from Nevada, you see his name right here. He's been uh, listed uh, as a no or a leaning no on this. Well, he now is a maybe on this. He seems to be changing uh, his position, potentially at least, on this. He joins us now from Washington. Congressman, you were a no this morning, or a likely no this morning. You're now a maybe. What is changing in your thinking on this? Hey, Steve, I don't want to upset you in the beginning, but I don't know who your sources are. I'm whipped as undecided, and I can assure you that whoever told you I'm a maybe is inaccurate. I'm sorry. Could you, you are undecided right now? That's what I'm whipped as, is undecided. You that's are, correct. You are, you are undecided right now. You're a maybe. That's, that's, what, we, uh, that's what we called you there. Um, okay, what would it take to make you a yes? Um, you know what? We've got three, uh, three amendments that are pending in front of the Rules Committee, and I'm going to uh, be real bold and tell you that I predict those amendments not to be made in order. So uh, that would certainly be a foundation for uh, uh, sending me a message as to what my concerns were. And, you know, you mentioned uh, uh, repeal and replace. Those mean different things for different people. We've been diving real deep into how that works in Nevada, and I can tell you that most people, I think, when it comes down to it, when they're on the uh, kitchen table with the checkbook out, if uh, premiums don't go down, if deductibles don't go down, if choices don't go up, then I think people will consider that a broken promise in the same way that they did. You can keep your doctor if you want to, you can keep your plan if you want to, and premiums will go down under the previous try seven years ago. Let me ask you a basic philosophical question here, because this seems to be the, the, one of the big divides on the Republican side. You may, I mentioned the Freedom Caucus there, the members of the Freedom Caucus who say, look, they want a pure repeal of Obamacare. They just want what was Obamacare, what is Obamacare, to be taken off the books entirely. They say this doesn't go far enough in doing that. You have some moderates saying it may go too far. It may take away too many positive things. Where are you on that divide? Does this take away too much or too little? Well, Steve, I think, I mean, our focus has been on, on what is the expectation of people after the last election cycle. So when you get into all the minutia of how much is enough or too little or too much and all that stuff, we've just boiled it down to are people going to feel like things have gotten better in the health uh, in the healthcare market and the cost and the availability. And quite frankly, we're still doing some homework to try to find where we can point to that, those things being moved in the right direction uh, as a result of the passage of this legislation. Could you see a scenario where House Republican leaders decide to delay this vote, to pull this bill and not have the vote tomorrow? You know what, they don't, they don't ask my advice on that stuff, but I mean, one of the common, uh, one of the common uh, options is if, if you don't have the votes, then, then you pull it back. Uh, the, the other one, obviously, is let's, uh, let's put the vote scoreboard up there and see where everybody is. What would you like to see them do? You know what? Uh, I mean, there's a lot of water under the bridge. I can tell you that, that as a process guy, uh, I, I can't go back and turn back that clock, but I think it was a fundamental mistake to not have hearings in the traditional regular order sense, which means witnesses. Put hospitals on the record. Put governors on the record. Put health care administrators on the record. Put all those major groups on the record, because a funny thing happens then, Steve, you might actually have a wider foundation from which to go do a bill. Now, health care is, is is, is phenomenally complex, but, but the broader the foundation, I think the stronger the product is in the end. And we decided to omit, omit that here. House of Representatives. Donald Trump told Republicans, uh, your fellow Republicans, you and your fellow Republicans yesterday, if you don't pass this, if you don't get this done, you will lose your majority in 2018. Do you think there's a risk there? Well, um, of, of course, there's always a risk. In politics, a week can be a very long time. Uh, the president's doing, uh, shooting his best shot to get the bill passed, uh, and, and I don't begrudge him doing that. Uh, he should do that. I can just tell you that, speaking only for this particular vote, that we're going to basically go long on the issues, and uh, if you get fired for trying to do the right thing on the issue instead of the right political thing, then I'll accept that. If this bill goes to a vote tomorrow, if it's defeated, are there broader implications for Donald Trump for this White House and its legislative agenda, the talk of tax reform later this year. If you can't get this through, can you get something like tax reform through? 
I don't, I don't think that's necessarily the truth, but hopefully the lesson learned is this, and that is dropping something three weeks, and, and it's not that it's necessarily a, an administration lesson, but it's, listen, if we're going to build consensus, if we're going to try to pull it all from the Republican side of the House, you need to build consensus before you go to markups of the, of the bill, not after. Right, Congressman Mark Amaday, Republican from Nevada. Thank you for the time. Appreciate it.